When last we left our brave adventurers, they had escaped the clutches of the horribly monstrous Katya and convinced her that she could live a new life. Unfortunately, Katya had been conditioned for so long to believe that she was a monster that she could not accept what they were saying and crawled into the tunnels to beseech the god below the town for a new face. The party returned to their citadel. Upon returning, there were a few messages, a few meetings. Some people got out some aggression that they needed to, some people reconciled, made their apologies, and while they were exploring, Bosric and Zier happened upon a young French woman walking in the lanes who could not only see and speak to Mary, but seemed to be friendly with her and recognize what she was. She summoned a nightmare from Zier's mind to stab her in the chest, or in the gut, excuse me, and then disappeared. Bosric brought her back inside just in time for the rest to revive her. And we return that evening before long rests are had. Zir is awake and is terrified, and Azura has given over control of Mary to Cleden in hopes that they can confuse this new enemy who introduced herself as Lisa Bet. So, brave and intrepid heroes, while I kick up the music, what would you like to do now? Uh, I want to say a handful well, of us end of last session already went to bed because I remember there yes. was a scene mm -hmm. where um, Mizuro was uh, looking over Zira and then she was carried to bed. I think it was Bosric. Bosric fell asleep in a chair watching you and then one of your siblings took him took you to bed. It was oh, Bosric. Yes, he, okay. he didn't fall asleep. The, the sibling actually told him to go to bed, which yes. he did. Yes. Uh, Leif. So, so we uh, are it was after... not Leif that told you to go to bed. It was the tiefling. Um, I don't know any of them, so... Um, you uh, will with time. Maybe. But, um... So we are... This is post-long rest? Uh, this is still pre-long rest. Just checking in if anybody wants to do anything else before they fall asleep. If you do not, then yes. Post-long rest. Um, I got nothing else. Okay. Uh, did Queden already go to bed, or is Queden just chilling? I think I took uh, Mary to my room. I believe I believe we ended uh, last session off in that state. Okay. Uh, then I'll be going to the roof again to keep watch. So does everyone else just have their long rest? Mm-hmm. Good to go. All right. Can everybody except Zir roll me a wisdom save? Cool. The cool 17. Okay. 22 Five. with modifier. Will this be will this be during the long rest? Or post the long rest? During the long rest. Then because it'll rejuvenate, I will use a luck die to reroll. Okay. Much better. Eighteen. Okay. And uh Queen and you got a seventeen? Yes. Okay. Um Both of you sleep very fitfully. Osric, you see um, the same image that you saw when Mazura activated his shroud, um, your sister. But this time, she looks you in the eye, and you feel yourself paralyzed and 
and she looks you in the eye and she starts to laugh as she tears off bits of her face and you can see the skin and bone just peeling away and underneath it you see inscribed in orcish on her body hundreds of names some which you recognize some which you don't um, these are ancestors of yours and you know that in Orcish society, specifically in Rovanian Orcish society, to mark the bones of a body is to expel them from the afterlife. One name is enough to curse a person. She's covered in thousands. Whedon, you see an elf. You recognize, but he's not wounded. He's in perfect health. And then you hear a howl in the distance. And as he reaches his hand out towards you, he turns to ash and blows away in the wind. Both of you do receive the benefit of a long rest, but you wake up with seven less hit points below your maximum. How does Mary sleep? Um, Mary, Mary doesn't. Sleep Mary fine. does not sleep. No, Mary's, Mary gets the benefit of uh, my abilities. She does not sleep. <clears throat> so Very our cool. hit point maximum doesn't change, just the total hit points we currently have. Correct. So that puts me at 51. Seven less, you said? Seven less, yeah. Buzz will get up first and, and well, try and protect nothing happens. You also both have one point of exhaustion. Uh, I thought that was going to happen. <laughs> so that's right. disadvantage. Where is that mark? Where, is, where can you mark that? Uh, it's just a condition that you kind of uh, just have it pulled up and remember. The first point ah, is disadvantage on all ability checks? Yes. And it can be fixed with a greater restoration or a long rest. If we ever able to long rest again. <laughs> I didn't sleep very well. Um, Mosric, as you wake up, you find you are not the first awake. Um, you come down to what is sort of the rudimentary kitchen of this fortress, and Clovis is awake already. And um, he says, oh, Hello. Uh, I hope I didn't wake you. I slept a bit fitfully last night. Same. I, I'm sorry. What happened to you? More the same. And, um... He's just gonna he's just gonna kinda check in and see how everyone else is if um go and check up on um on Missouri. Alright. Um Missouri I think has stayed at the top of the tower the whole night. Yeah, if you come up to the top of the tower, you'll find that Missouri's just constantly just patrolling around keeping a vigil eye as much as possible on the surroundings morning good morning how did Anything? everyone get along well i don't want to jump to conclusions <laughs> but i had awful dreams uh, Clovis said he, he slipped fitfully. Uh, I haven't talked to Guido Nazir yet, but uh... I've done nothing to you. Oh, I know. I'm thinking more. I'm thinking it was more of our visitor from last night. I'm thinking she uh, decided to flex the claws a little on us. 
I didn't feel anything. Okay, that opens up a whole lot of other terrifying doors. I would say with that 22, did I feel anything? Treadmaster, on my right? Um, you may have felt a pull at the edge of your consciousness, but it's nothing that you wouldn't have felt before. Well, either we just had, either I just had a very specific nightmare and Clovis slept fitfully, or this place is just horribly cruel to us even while we dream. Regardless, I'm not at full, I'm not fully rested today. And let's rouse the others, make sure they're okay. If need be, I can uh, step ahead of the pack and try to offset your uh, tiredness. That'd be appreciated. I think right now, let's just focus on getting Dimitri back to his family and we can start plotting on it because next move for after that uh, very well all right um i will start heading down and um i will as well <laughs> <coughs> knowing that mary's with uh Quedon, um i'll just uh telepathically mary where are you i'm in the fairbolt room uh, location. Third door from the front door, across from the large sitting room. So I will go to that door, and at first I'll listen to see if he's already awake. Uh, I think you would. I mean, you wouldn't hear anything if you listen. I think uh, to calm myself down after a restless night uh, i am attempting to uh read and study the book that uh clovis gave me uh the night before and hearing nothing i would uh just back to mary um rouse him please uh so that the rest can come so we can all gather he's awake he's reading i'll just knock on the door I, like, jump a little bit. Uh, yes? Uh, we're gathering together. Uh, we're, I believe we're setting off. Be right out. And I just... I, I, like, put the book away. It's like, I'm not... I'm, like, trying to, like, not hide it, but just keep it my... You know, put it away. And, uh... Head on out, yeah. Grab my things. Um, as you walk out, Somnus gives you a smile. Good morning, Greedon. Morning. Did you, did you sleep all right? Also, and I had horrible dreams. Yeah, I, uh... That's weird. Is everyone the same? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think Mazora actually uh, sleeps, but, uh... That is true. Uh, yeah, I'm... I do not. Uh, a restless night. Has anyone checked on our, um, scruffy child? You're only saying that because she isn't here to hear it. <laughs> and I kind of pat it, like, kind of like, Good one. And I'm I can to give her her space, you know. After Osric, roll an insight check. Dying thing. Uh. Insight. Uh, 14. He smiles and says, yes, of course. Then we'll go check, um. Is Zero up yet? Are you asking out of character? 
Or are you asking yeah. someone? Out of, in... out, of, out of character. Is zero. She is. She's still in her room. Um, but if you had walked by, you would hear her moving about. I will. Is here? You can come in. I mean, I just want to say we're, we're having breakfast and such and getting ready to set out when I, if you want to come eat or something. Oh, um, yeah. Hold on. And you hear a thud <laughs> and some rustling and then she comes out. Morning. Okay. Morning. What are we having for breakfast? Oh, I helped. I didn't have anything prepared. I'm sorry. I, I couldn't sleep, so I, uh, I did oh. some research. And you see that he, uh, Somnus, has the um, leather bound book in Clovis. front of him. Clovis. It's still Clovis. I called him Somnus. Sorry. Uh, yeah, you're good. <laughs> oh, you're cutting out a bit there, Clint. Yeah, having some. Uh oh, connectivity. No. The internet demons. Oh. Well, we all eat a wonderful, healthy, fun breakfast. Yeah, we all. And, and, then, then, we we find a, and then we find a magical key that lets us go yeah. home, and all of our family's yeah. alive, and we're so happy. Oh my god! <laughs> if that's not Everybody, what happened, say something now, Dreadmaster. <laughs> Everybody gets inspiration. Everybody gets Everybody. a thousand inspiration. You're and, and, level 20 now. Everybody gets <laughs> four levels. Oh, we, if we were level 20, he'd be oh. he'd be a okay with fighting with us fighting oh, no. all of the uh... yeah. Oh no, your boxes. <laughs> no, oh no, the boxes. The boxes. Are stream. Oh no, oh, the boxes. Sadness, the stream. Sadness. Who is who now? I stream. Well, <laughs> you're Ooh. well, well. Um, Maybe I'm Zier, You are now Bosrek. Okay. Oh. Um, Bosrek, you are now uh, DM Red. I'm Samurai. <laughs> I am now Zier. <laughs> I, I am now Zier, you... and weirdly, we did. <laughs> was in limbo. For all of Dread, Dread, you've been replaced. Dread, you've been replaced. Boz is now DM. Great. Right. It's all fixed. It's all fixed. Can I be Bosrek? <laughs> yeah, we, no. deci we decided yeah. that we're all level 20 and have inspiration and we all have uh, infinite found, inspiration. A, found a magical key that lets us leave. You yeah. decided that, did you? Yeah, well, we well yeah. in fairness, yeah. sounds fair. In fairness, we did say <laughs> that if you had a problem with it, say no now. And, and you didn't. You didn't. So. No. That's totally you fine. Stayed, no. You stayed grinning the whole time. No, yeah. you know what? I actually... um. That's sort of like I had that as a possibility that you would find the magic key. Uh, so yeah. go ahead and use it. <laughs> okay. The magic key was in the other dungeon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not using that key. This sounds, right. this sounds like a trap. Yeah, no. As, as someone who's what? fallen, no. as someone who's fallen into a pit through a door, <laughs> I don't really want to go opening anything. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. So I apologize, uh, dear Twitch viewers. Um, my internet just thought, hey, you know what would be fun? I'll just disconnect all the would. devices in the house. Restart. <laughs> yeah, I know it's, it's cool. We, we we figured it was an internet demon. So, <laughs> what Clovis was saying as he was looking in the leather bound book yes. is um, some of the pages are still blank, but there was a bit here on Lisa Bet. Um, apparently, she's been here the longest. She's by this logic, older than Adam Seltradon. She's not a vampire or anything like that. As far as the good paladin could tell, she was just an elf. Or something resembling an elf, I suppose. Well, considering what the uh, spores do to people, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. <laughs> No, and we've seen already that death doesn't hold much sway over this place, but... Well, you described her as being so young, I... I can't imagine a life here for that long. Well, we've already well. encountered rituals and blood magic, so... I mean, if she's been here even longer than Seltradot, who knows what kind of freaky science she's got going on? Also, it's very possible 
She let us see what she wanted us to see. I suppose that is true. We can't trust our eyes in this place. But he did find something else out about her. Um, apparently, before coming here, she was a doctor. She helped me. I don't know what could twist someone to do that. Mm, a I can think of a of few what? things. <laughs> she was a she was a psychiatrist, and maybe she specialized in dreams. No, apparently she was uh, a, a medical doctor. She she wasn't a cleric or anything. She had no magical ability, at least not that I could see. But she was practiced in herbs and sciences well beyond her time, but hmm. but if the date that the, the paladin brought back is correct, Elisabeth has been here for 3,000 years. So to have advanced medicine that long ago, she must be a being of incredible intelligence, if nothing else. Maybe she figured out an immortality kind of liquid youth thing with her medical knowledge. That's why she looks good. It's possible. You guys had bad dreams? I did not. Hmm. I did. Well, you don't dream at all, do you, Mess? Yeah, I do. Unlike you guys, I don't have to be asleep to do it. Hmm. Everything that comes out of your mouth horrifies me. I... It's fantastic. Yes. Um, I, I don't suppose we had the same bad dream, but mine ah. were quite personal. Then I imagine we did not. My dreams were a bit more esoteric. I found myself lost in a forest and everywhere I turned the trees seemed to move. I I couldn't get out. And you can see that Clovis like starts or yeah, Clovis starts to like scratch at his arm a little bit. It was it was some um, I don't I don't like not being in the city, and I have shown great bravery here, but I'm starting to lose my composure, hey, and I hey. would appreciate it if we could move with speed. Yes, of course, it's okay, it's okay, just, you know, try to breathe, I guess, like what Boz was telling me to do and, and stuff, um, it's, it's okay. Uh, yeah, well, well, I mean, where, where, where to next? We, we have a threat, for sure. We have a child I mean, who needs to get home. We have a new threat, but not much that we can do about it at this stage, except research, ask the locals, perhaps. Well, yes, I, I think that's good. And yes, we should get young Dimitri home. This is certainly no place for a child. Of course. This is certainly I'm... no place for us, it's seeming. May I insight check, Clovis? Have I seen this this uh, before? What exactly uh, are you talking about? This twitchiness. As far as being away from cities, because... Um, what'd you get on your insight check? Uh, well, I'm going to do a luck check. <laughs> oh, wait, no, it's a, I'm, I'm on disadvantage for ability scores anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Ability checks anyway, so... Um, a six. <laughs> um, yeah. No, you've seen him do this before. Maybe not to this degree, but, like, when you first met him, he was a scared person, and when you accompanied him through the path between Twilight and Silvervale, he was horrified. He did not want to leave the cart. You had to 
almost physically take him out of the cart when you got to the city. So, to that, to that end, I propose we eat quick, take down the tower, head back to town, get the lad back to his family, and then we can start making future plans. Sounds good to me. Yes, I agree. Zora? Quidden? Of course. Uh, I'm just waiting on you. Alright. Yes, um... Well, I... I suppose I could throw, throw something together. Um, <laughs> Hang on. I'm fairly certain uh, as a uh, as a, in in training, I've been able to I can throw together a very quick something or other, even if it's just like bowl of of porridge or something, very very quickly. So Honestly, that I can get a because scout. of your um, your enlisted work, you probably would have pre cut rations. So I wouldn't imagine that you know actually how to cook. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, throw together really quickly t rations. Do, 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 do. Let's eat. Well, but that's the thing. Like, as you're doing that, close has actually, um, being one who is fond of the cities, I've gotten very good at making meals. If if you wouldn't mind, it won't take me long. Um, if you like, I'm just gonna do. I'm just gonna eat, just eat some quick rations, just so I'm good to go. And I'm gonna see. Yes. It's such a lovely job when we were with the matron. Could you, could you assist me? With a quick breakfast? Yes. Quick back. Uh, um, quick breakfast is called mush, right? So normally, you do like egg and then like a toast and then like other stuff. Um, but when you have to do it quick, uh, my siblings would call it mush. And you just cook it all in the pan at the same time and like scramble it up and then you are mush. such everything that just came out of your mouth sounds so disgusting but you know what we're going to do it and he just like starts to like put all these things in the pan heck yeah mush just sort of mushes out to each of you um he offers some to you basric even though you've already got your rations um because i'm, I'm actually that you wouldn't i'm actively with less than also days I'm also actively going to go and do a quick kind of look around and see if there's any sign from the night before or anything threatening about. Um, I know I'm doing that with disadvantage. I'm actually going to say you don't need to roll for this. As you investigate the tree that you were both standing at, something you didn't see last night that you see before, you can see your footprints and Zeer's hoof prints in the mist. Or in like the spore fall on the ground, but those are the only footprints outside. And so you also, sure. in the trunk of the tree, see a very small indentation, about the size of a short sword tip, which means that whatever went through Zir went through the tree too. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome for that. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Hate that. Hate that. Hate that. <laughs> I'm gonna take like just look around, just take in the hellish scenery, which is probably not that hellish, but everything around here just feels terrible now. Yeah, I mean, honestly, with it, one, it's kind of gloomy here at all times. So knowing night from day is a little bit difficult. Night is only a little bit darker than day. But it does have an odd charm to it. Like, you can look around and sort of think to yourself, you know, if we weren't in mortal peril at all times, this could be beautiful. Because the way the spores sit on the trees do give it a sort of, like, winter wonderland scape look so no it's not all that hellish 
but hell is what you make it. How do we break uh, this place down? Oh, um, well, once we've eaten and put everything in its proper place, um, I'll just deactivate it. I, I assume we should all be outside when that happens? Yes, I don't think the magic would account, account for you, and you would, um... Mush. Because you'd get a good bit <laughs> smaller. Ha -ha. Yeah! Hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> Does anyone have an egg or something of that nature? An egg? Yes. He hands you one of the eggs he was going to use for cooking. I place it on the floor. Don't touch that. We'll leave it when this place shrinks. We'll find out next time it opens if uh, everything... If anything uh, that's in here is affected by the magic. Oh, oh my gosh, we could crush right? people in here. <laughs> that you, I, you are just, well, you are just a delightful little urchin. Yeah. She is. I was thinking the same thing, but I was looking at both sides of the coin. Yeah. You think we could hide people in here and keep them safe? One, we could keep people safe. And if the egg, that's if the egg doesn't crack. If the egg does crack, then we could potentially be use, use it as a weapon itself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Everything's cool. a weapon if you try hard enough. I suppose that is true. Well, that's a horrifying death. Well, none of us would be in it, we hope. Well, yes, but the method of death is still horrifying. Nonetheless. Yeah, I won't disagree with you. We'll save it for someone deserving. I was thinking of two people That's in particular, if we were to freeze them and mm. shut the door, as it were. It's a lot of cleanup. Is it? They now are that I have experience with. Oh, Ah, uh, okay. Too much? No, it's fine. Conversations I'm glad I'm not there for. <laughs> I know that I... some of us are really excited at the prospect of potentially using a building to crush individuals. Um, I'm one of them. Um, but we should probably finish our, uh, what was this, gruel? Um, mush. Mush. I believe it was called. Um, let's get through this quickly and get the boy it's back. It's called Mush. So, um, and we get the uh, the boy back as fast as possible uh, because in this um, daylight, uh, we probably shouldn't waste it. Sorry, I'm overzealous. It's a coping method, I think. Um, yeah, Enjoy I'm the bush and all the enjoyment <laughs> it gives you. Thanks. Wait, before taking his last bite, Quinn just goes, Mush. And just an yeah. eats the last bite. I like high five you if you accept it. I turn and yes, you get it. I have like still have a spoon in my hand. I just like, uh huh. Mom, okay, excellent. <laughs> Very good. Um, Zero, Zero, you haven't seen Zero smile yet this morning after the chaos of last night, and she like you saying that you get a smile out of her. Zero, as you're eating, you hear. Or just at the corner of your hearing, three voices just start chanting, Bush, 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 Bush. Yes. <laughs> yes. God, breakfast of champions, baby. All right. So uh, you guys make your way out. Um, Clovis reaches up and touches the side of the tower and just, <clears throat> uh, send off. And then he picks it up and he turns it sideways and just. <clears throat> just liquid egg interior falls out of where the door was and he says delightful now I have to put this in my bag and then he snows it he kind of wraps it in cloth and puts it away Boz having no context because I'm not going to ask yeah don't worry about it <laughs> I won't <laughs> alright well where are we off to? 
Back to the um, to the village. Yeah, where did we find? Yeah. We'd like to go home now, please. Of course. Then home, let's go. All right. You guys make your way back to the village. Official inquiry. Um, how is everyone walking? That is with my, my legs. Like yeah. one foot in front of the other. <laughs> like grouping together. <laughs> yeah. Um. I mean, I'll take. I don't know, who who's leading? I'll take. I think Somnus is probably leading. He he's surprisingly like I want to go to a place that I understand that is city adjacent. So we got Clovis, presumably Zir and um, Queen behind him. Sure. I would pick up the rear if uh, yeah. Boz has the front. Uh, Boz is actually going to be on the other side of Zir. In a, in protecting, because I'm presuming Dimitri is. Where's Dimitri at? Um, Dimitri is walking with Missouri. Okay. Oh, then I would not be in the back. Um, I would be. <laughs> I'd probably be more towards the uh, the front, maybe second. Um, okay. holding the um, the hand, uh, and just uh, walking. Probably every now and then doing like a little bit of prestidigitation uh, to entertain the child. All right. And then I'll hold. Then I'll hold down kind of like a back into the side to kind of, if I need to move forward and protect a flank, I can. Or if I need to move back and protect there, I can. Okay. Um, your walk to the city is uneventful. Um, We've already killed but, everything here. <laughs> well, it's also daytime. Um, as you approach, where are you headed? Are you headed to the, um, the monastery or are you headed to the town hall? The town hall. The town hall is where he's from, so more than likely town hall. So as you get closer, um, the doors burst open, and um, Amelia says, "Wait!" I and like tries to grab after this woman who comes bursting out, and just grabs Dimitri and my son, my sweet son, and then she starts talking to him in a language that none of you understand. It is a dead dialect, and Dimitri just says, M "Mati, I'm okay. The nice people got me. I knew they would." And she's just crying, and she looks up at all of you and starts to, like, she takes your hands, and she's kissing your knuckles. Thank you. Thank you so much for rescuing my boy. Inside. Let's move this reunion inside. Yes. We have a lot to talk about. Um, Amelia kind of nods to all of you as you walk in. Um, and you notice there are more people in here than were when you left. Osric, you particularly noticed that the man you met in the sewer who you saw the dead body of is alive but he doesn't look exactly the same his bottom lip is sticking out a little bit and you can see the nubs of tusks Um, as you walk in, he he side of stands to attention, um, and like puts up his rifle. Captain Bazura, Captain Bozrik, sorry. Play any more? You are always a captain. That is. He just, he, he just kind of peels off to kind of because he's still partly because he's still exhausted just kind of sitting apologies sir I'll leave you to the rest and he just walks over and closes the door behind you oh, the, oh I would have closed the door like I'm not leaving any doors open in this place anymore 
to the outside. If there, if if I was the last one through, I would have closed the doors. But yeah, it's just kind of. Um, Samna says, "There's uh, more here than I remember." Yamila says, "I suppose that is the benefit of where we live. Death is impermanent, but you can never know. It is the will of the Maker and whether or not we return, or perhaps the will of the thing below. I give it up trying to decide." Um, so do you want something you needed to talk to us about? It, it has a side effect though, right? Dying? Something like that. They come back different. Change them. Reynolds, and she points over to the uh, the man that Bosra had. Reynolds uh, came back with orcish tusks. Something like them, I suppose. I think that sometimes you return with a wish, something that you see as a betterment of yourself. I suppose he thought that Bosric was what he wanted to be, so when he came back, he became something like Bosric. Hmm. Are there any other Richard examples? Stonland. People just come back different. More beautiful, younger, older. Hmm. I came back with blue eyes. They were brown. So what's the downside? Back. Nothing's free. The only downside we've noticed is that sometimes it doesn't stick. So we treat death like we do in the regular world. What do you mean it doesn't stick? Your blue eyes go away, or...? You die and you stay dead. Oh. Even the major and the goddess of life, her, her abilities have limits. Other than that, I'm sure there are downsides we don't understand. Something, some contract made with the creature below. Or perhaps it weakens the mission to bring us back. I imagine in this place our powers are finite. But she keeps us safe. Keeps the werewolves out of the city for the most part, or at least she did before the last incursion. But the Seltradots have never attacked us in daylight before. They've never been so bold. Something has changed. We assume it is your arrival that has made them this way, but we're not sure. But you had information for us. We're happy to answer your questions, but you said you had something you needed to talk to us about. What is it? And then she looks at you, Zir, and she runs over and she grabs your hands and she looks at your hands. I'm so sorry. How did it happen? Um. I was careless. Well, it's good to know you have a high opinion of yourself. Somebody who didn't know what to look for would not even know you had changed at all. You already see yourself as the peak of what you want to be, I suppose. Hmm. But... <sighs> Perhaps this would be better over drinks. And uh, she goes behind the bar and she comes back with a few steins of ale and just puts them down in front of you. So, what news? Um, well, we were able to get Dimitri at some cost. Obviously, you've learned of one. Um, 
This thing below the village, we may have met it. If not, we met something else very unpleasant. And the uh, lady of the, one of the other ladies, uh, Lisbeth. Um, as you say that, her face seems to lose color. Well, Lisbeth. What can you she tell may... us? You seem to know more than we do. You are strong, all of you. I can tell that. You wouldn't have been brought here if you weren't. You wouldn't have survived the spores if you weren't. You seem prone to kick hornets' nests. I watched your performance against the werewolves. You handled yourselves well. It is not a hornet's nest you want to kick. Oh, she made that very clear. Uh, I mean, we kind of kicked it already. So. Yes, I'm afraid she happened upon us. Um, she was talking about um the companion of uh, our rather frightening friend here, um, looking for whoever summoned him. I don't. I don't think she knew. And, um, Amelia kind of just... We don't know much about her. We know that she's been here the longest. She was here before we came. She is the first. Not by much. The Baron, Baron Gretos came soon after. She's the only one the others have met. No one wants to go near her house, and anyone who wanders in is never seen again. So they going in return. there is a final death. They do not return from death if they return at all. We don't... We don't know if those who go into there die. The house is steep in a strange hour. We think she views death as a gift. But so far she has not been going to give. Hmm. She was from what we understand a doctor for children. Because in addition to being very good at understanding the anatomy of the human body, she was very adept at making toys. I think that's what she thinks of us as. Things to be broken and put back together. Well, she's powerful. That's for sure. Did anything transpire here while we were gone? Dead returned from the sewer. Some changed, some not. Not all of them came back this time. There was an eerie quiet, which means that the four guardians have a meeting somewhere. Yeah, Seltry don't mention that. We don't know why, but that would explain why you were not accosted on the way back here. Whatever is releasing the lichens stopped. Or took them wherever it was going. I don't think these meetings that they have are entirely peaceful. What would they even... Yeah, what would they even be meeting about? Dividing up the domain, I suppose. Vying for power over each other? Well, this is a domain of dread, my dear. Well, that meeting's there's always probably one, over. There's always one dread master. That doesn't mean others can't be out their own territory. 
Mm. It's what people with power want. More power. So we can pin them against each other. Well, that could be possible, I I, I think. And you can see that uh, Clovis is, like, writing in another notebook. I... From everything that the book has told me, uh, which isn't much, again, it only reveals a few things at a time. It's rather unhelpful for an educational book. But, well, I suppose if it gave us all the answers, things would be too easy. Hmm. There is... There is one. He was like you when he came here. Talking to him is probably your best bet to turning the others against each other. He... He has no love for the creature beneath the sewer, but he also has no love for the Matron. Is he the one you were mentioning when you were talking about putting up bars? Before we left. Said someone was with you once. Yes. Gregor. Gregor was his name. Speaking of which, uh, this will be an abrupt change of face, but do you have a metal worker or a smith in town? Oh, yes. Um, we have a forge that we keep going. Um, are you in need of armor or supplies? Wouldn't hurt. I, I mean, obviously we don't have much need for gold, but I'm sure we can figure out some sort of barter, or you can do us a favor, or bring us something. Whatever you like, just... Actually, I actually look over at uh, Queen and because we are of comparable height, but I'm definitely broader than he is, so he probably couldn't fit into my chain mail unless they took it in or something but uh, some better armor wouldn't go amiss oh no I am a twig yes I've had to <laughs> I've had to get much of my clothing custom made they don't I make am... pants for legs this long we do have one of these and Somnus reaches in and takes out one of the skulls, not revealing that he has two. All right, Clovis. Close. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> it's okay. Clovis it's takes very, out one of the charming. skulls. From um, my pack, because I believe I was carrying them. Yes, um, not revealing that there are, in fact, two. It says, we um, we found these in Madame Sajidon's mana. They once had a very powerful anti-magic field, but that field has... I suppose, run out of charge, but they're made of Aurum, and they must be worth something. And Amelia nods and says, yes, I'm sure we could figure something out. Just tell us what you want to put in an order, and we, um, we have alchemists here as well, who could mm. provide you with some rudimentary potions. Nothing you'd get further from, I'm sure. But that would, something. anything would be helpful, I think. Better kid it out we are, the better if we can get things done. I suppose that is true. Um, unfortunately, we do not have an enchanter here, so anything you do get from us will be mundane. But... What about information? Where do you guys store information on these individuals uh, that come through? Like the Seltradots and the Elizabeths and is there anywhere and where the information offices. on them? would be stored or housed so that we can better understand what we're going to be taking on here? We don't usually record information about the monsters that are hunting us except how to kill them, and we have no idea how to kill the four who take residence in the four regions. For that, you'd need to talk to the matron, but I don't think she knows much either. That's why she gave you the book. That paladin was the closest anyone's ever come to freeing us and the matron. He was a brave man, Leandros. Hmm. 
We'll just have to figure it out. What, what happened to him? I believe a final dirt nap, it seems. You make your way to the manufacturer. There is a construct that guards the gates. A large one. Hmm. Gold and silver armor. Wielding a sword and shield. And at the center of its construct is a living heart. Oh. Um. Their fate's worse than death. Well, maybe we can put him to rest. If the creature allows him to die. Maybe so. He would be doing me a favor. I was... I was fond of him. When he was here. Nothing in the... Romantic sense, of course. I'm far too old for that, and have been for many centuries, but... I thought of him like a son. Hmm. He was interesting. He spoke of having traveled to other domains and escaped. Hmm. Well, if his heart is still... beating... If we destroy that, maybe there's a chance he can come back? I don't know, I'm <laughs> still figuring out how it all works. One thing at a time, but good thinking. Well, what's our current one thing? Going back? I would like to see about maybe getting some better armor. Mm. And some better armor for uh, for Queden. Clovis, you got decent armor, but you always stand for improvement. Yes, well, um, apparently I can also armor my skin. That's also true. That was an interesting trick. Yes, we'll, um, we'll see what we can do. Um, armor, armor for Weedon and Clovis. And me. If I can get something that frees up my hands, I can swing for a little bit, bit of damage. I will never say no to being a bit stronger, although it was never a goal of mine, but here we are. This Strong is a very is... versatile word. It can mean a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, we'll see what we can do. I think we Familiar can at least... Phrase. I think we can at least fit both of the, um, the clerics in some chain or perhaps scale. As for yourself, um, perhaps a half plate? Look up the rules I have, okay? It's, uh, Tasha. Oh, no, wait. Here live for you now, watchers of Lawful Stupid, the tedium of looking up rules. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna lean in towards here. Do you need anything? Uh... I was going to grab the potions. Might as well. There's nothing they can uh, provide me in terms of armor. Yeah, because you're already rock solid and she'll like punch him <laughs> in the arm. <laughs> no, because I can't wear anything else. Oh. Cool. Or it at least I can't wear anything better than this. I was, I was making it joke i'm trying to i'm trying to be friends um no no you're, yeah you're fine you don't have to try with me it's okay oh you're good okay 
Well, cool. Do you That's want to go talk to me? The current level about? would actually be about the same as chainmail. Um, but what is actually uh, player? Um, um, uh, Queen has left. I'll have to look into that. Um, the highest half plate can get for me is because it's it's dexterity plus two, um, dexterity up to plus two is 17 at present it's literally exactly the same as my chain mail i we will we'll see what we can do for you oh. if, I, uh, if i can collect some if uh, if, if materials what you need i can see about collecting some while they're bartering i'm just going to take out my dragon chest set and start playing That was um, a DM mistake because they switched what armor represents what between 5e and 3.5. Splint is what she is offering. Splint mail. Which is a solid, it's a flat 17. It doesn't add your dex. Splint would be, yeah, Splint would be. Yeah, split would be great. Okay. If you need material for chain for either the clerics, I can donate mine. I'm actually fairly well armored. This is um Clovis Dog. He's got he's got chain mail, as I recall, right? Yes, and a shield, so he's yeah, so he's rocking an eighteen, but especially we're worried about our uh what mostly we're worried about keeping Queen safe. I'm sure we can find something for him. Um, and we will make you do some splint as well. And you you mentioned wanting potions. Yes, please. All right. Um like four. Yes, if you give us the skull that you found. I think that we can accommodate you with five potions, actually. No. Um three of the regular strength and two greater wow as well as the armor for the boys since the um the shorter one doesn't actually need it and clovis just kind of grins what's the plan for the skull it's autumn we can use it for all sorts of things we can shorter our magical defenses around it. like what is there a way that we should be utilizing it or not as good for us because we do magic. Mm. Well, Orum is magical. It's just magic metal, essentially. You mm. don't have to. Whatever enchantment was on this that was making it anti magic is not the only enchantment that can be channeled through Orum. Oh. What is your um? What is your experience with galvanism? You guys can roll intelligence checks to see what your experience is with galvanism, if you'd like. None, I'm assuming. Know what that means. Intelligence check? That's a 12. Yes. <laughs> uh, I, roll one. I got disadvantage on those. Well, my first roll wasn't too great. I got a 17. <laughs> I'm gonna roll one for Clovis just because he's 13. a nerd. Oh, natural one. Good job, Clovis. All right. Um, okay. Uh, Zir, you have actually, from breaking into places, you know about, like, electric fences and things, and you know yeah. the basics of circuitry. Oh, yeah. So you know about galvanism. That's so good. Okay. So um, the, uh, the sort of brownish metal that they use, that uh, copper, I think it's called, that mm -hmm. transmits electricity. This yeah. is like that, but for magic. So having um, the skull... A we magic can... conductor. Yes, exactly. Okay. Cool. So we could imbue it with a spell of our own. You would. It would if require. If we came across more. It would require magic of, of high power. But yes, you could. Hmm. I will be putting 
objurative magic into it, but I've been studying the clerical arts for a very long time. Cool. You get to know. We'll keep an eye out for more, then. Yes. Um, so, uh, I can go ahead and give you the potions now. Um, it will take us some time to make the armor. Could you come? You can rest here if you'd like. I don't know what sort of rush you're in. It will take us about three days to finish both sets. Hmm. If you have we were, this, you we, were considering, we were considering speaking uh, to the matron as well. Uh, just seeing if she had any further information on the four problems. <laughs> of course. Um, thread carefully. The sun is going down. And even though the meeting is happening, we don't know what will be moving. So oh, I'd how... be willing to bet money that meeting's over. Considering yeah. how uh, how how long till sundown? Do we have time to run by the 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 church, or should we wait? Regardless of what you do, if you leave now to go to any place, you will be outside at sundown. You are closer to the church than you are to um, the mansion, but you would still have to travel under darkness. Uh, I um, prefer not. I, if I, I still, I'm still uh, need to sleep off the rest of that nightmare. So, call it. We have beds here you can take. Appreciate it. Are we under a time limit at all? Have we been told that? Not that I know of. Not that no. I can. We haven't been told. You haven't told. The only time limit, we, the only time crunch we were working on was getting Dimitri back. And whatever time works differently here means if we could get back and, well, if when we get back, it could be, could be a few days, could be years, who knows. There is the unfortunate, thought, I don't mean to be the bearer of bad news, but there is the unfortunate possibility that the... Seltridon sisters will find out about the death of their eldest, youngest. I don't eldest. understand that family dynamic there. Yes, but they treated her like the youngest. Regardless, their sister, and find some blame with us. Oh, they'll blame us. This. They'll blame us. But where are we? Well, it it might be good for us to stay here then. And have them come to us rather than fight them in their space. Well, it's better for don't... us to stay here because they're going to blame these people because this is where we came to afterwards. Hmm. They're going to they're going to think however immortal creatures' brains think, which is however they want. But yes, they are eventually going to come for us. And I am not a hundred percent for a fight right now. Well, you have given us a bit of an edge that we can use for at least a short amount of time. It won't last forever, but we can provide you some safety for at least the next couple of nights. And she uh, takes the skull and she starts chanting and you can see the symbol on her neck starts to glow as she moves her hands around and the skull starts to reshape itself into the shape of a shield mm. and she puts it up on the wall and there's a brief pulse of a sort of prismatic energy that covers um, the entire house as she puts up a field of non-detection mm. and then mm. she kind of like cracks her fingers still some tricks in these silver bones I'd like to say yeah yeah won't be able to find you. Well, that won't last forever. You need to last so as long as I can shake it. Yes. I'll have some food. Get some rest. Sounds good. We can go talk to the matron in the morning, right? We can come and go between the 
barrier and she like looks at the the walls yes you can't you won't break the barrier okay but the non-detection only lasts while you're in here sure we'll have to recharge it we'll have to find some source of energy to power whatever these things are what powers them i'm not sure a source of magical energy usually whatever wherever you took them from or wherever you took this one from it had some sort of generator something that was making a magical flow pass through it recasting the spell hmm. interesting so if any magic were to channel into it now it would just recreate the magic that it had before or once it came off the charge, that, that went away. That died off. Once a spell is cast on it, as long as some charge remains, any magical energy funneled into it would power the current spell. Once the spell dissipates completely, a new spell can be applied. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Cool. Something to think about. Um, can everybody perception checks? Perception? Perception. 17. Natural wonders. I am too tired. 21. Perception. Sixteen. Okay. Um only Zir hears this. And it's kind of at the corner of your vision. Or your vision, your hearing. But you hear um a sound like something large slipping into water. Just sort of and then <laughs> But it sounds very far off. I, I think the meeting might be over. Hmm? I assume that from the visitor you described. What gives you that thought beyond the visit? I don't know. It's just like a sound on the wind. sounds like um i don't know how that creature abomination or whatever it is has been described in the water Rethos. yeah there's a her terrible scream it's hard to describe him his form is beautiful but the best way i can describe it is Take, you have piranhas where you are. Take piranha, cut off the back, put it onto a centipede. Mm. And then make it the size of an ancient dragon. Mm. Is there any that bodies is... of water that feed over here? No. Thank the major, there are not. He is confined to the aquifer. He has shown the ability to be amphibious. So, so far we've been thankful that his hunger hasn't extended to us. Hmm. Yeah, we should save that one for last, I think. Your I'll... favorite. I, I wouldn't want to assume any of them was first. I'm just going to keep right. watch. And I'll go over to the window. Did they put up the bars yet? Yes. Okay, I'll go over and I'll even tap on the bars. Good. And then I'll just keep watch out the window. Um, You tap on the bars and they do not make a sound. Because they are absorbing the entire vibration of your thing. That's how solid the seat is. All right, well, I'll just uh, nod in approval and then 
my watch begins. Uh, Dimitri um, starts to grab a rifle and walk over to you, and his, mo his mother goes, ah, 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 no, I've lost you once already. You're staying with me. Mati, let me stay up with Mr. Mazura. I want to keep watch. Ha, ha, ha. Don't argue with me, Dimitri. Okay. I'll just say out loud, nothing good comes from arguing right now. There'll be other times. Where's his he sister gets, at? He, like, perks up, and uh, his mom rolls her eyes, but gives you, you know, kind of a knowing smile. Um, You haven't seen his sister. Hmm. I want rid of this exhaustion level, so I'm just going to go to bed. Okay. Ditto. I... I think I'm going to stay up and leave a little bit. If that's all right with everyone. I'll, I'll keep to myself. But I'll be here if you need me. Do what you will. Are you... are you feeling better? It is a fiddle, as it were. Hmm. Good. He just kind of back up the sits and goes back to reading. All right. You all lay down for a long rest, and because of the non detection, none of you have to roll anything for nightmares. So that's a consistent thing, I see. Mayhaps. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Yeehaw. Um okay, so um you guys receive whichever one of you wants to take the potions, you do get those pretty immediately. So you get four standard potions of healing and four and two greater potions of healing. I mean, I should take some as the resident healer, or maybe I shouldn't take any as the resident healer. Clovis takes one standard healing potion just for himself. Well, definitely, I'll take one of each, I suppose. Okay, one standard and one greater, so that leaves two standard and one greater left. Who wants which, just so I can keep track of who has what. I don't even know they got him. I'm looking out the window. Can I, yeah, can I toss As, one your way? Yeah, yeah. We'll, just, we'll just toss one over to you. Oh, uh, yeah. Right, so, probably... as you have a standard. Standard? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have you're no usually... problems with giving, <laughs> with giving as you're the greater. You're usually at the front lines, Foz. Do you want the greater? I mean, I have... Orcish sturdiness. So... I do have Orcish sturdiness, but so far we've fought relatively minor things. I worry what's going to happen when we fight something stronger. I mean, look what happened to Quedon. Quedon is... thin, but he's not without his strength and his durability, and he went down almost immediately to that acid vomit, whatever it was that caught you shot at us. So, I personally feel more comfortable with you having the, the healing potion. I'll grab one. I'll take the remaining standard. Um, before you do that, um, Clovis is actually going to come over and he's going to swap them. He's going to say, no, no, only one of you has fallen unconscious. No. Oh, yeah. oh I but... thought there was only a greater. If there was a, if there was a pick between a standard and a greater, you get the greater. I have healing tech. I, I'm gonna be very honest with you guys in a way that hurts me to say, um, I will not have the opportunity to take a potion. I will either be up or down. So I think you having a greater makes more sense. Especially because if I am down, you could bring it to me. 
Well, then how about this? He That's uh, my thought process. Clovis <laughs> takes the greater and keeps the greater in the standard. I'll be your potion. I'm Perfect. I'm not a healer, but I can. I'm cool with Walter, that. You take take your potion. I think this will be what we need. Do I get the good. standard? Yes. Yeah. Um, the potions, uh, these potions work, I think, slightly differently than 5e potions. Uh, they're a little bit more powerful. So a standard potion is 2d4 plus 4, and a greater is 4d4 plus 8. Which I think is slightly higher than standard potions. But those potions don't have mushrooms in Heck yeah. Uh, Mushroom well, juice. You can send... I was trying to find healing potion and equipment, but... I only found greater. So... I just... I'll just... Yeah. Alright. Uh, you guys have a restful night, uh, with the exception of Mazura, who stays up. Uh, Mazura, you see... Um, creatures, you know, moving through the forest, and like the area around the village. Um, you see some lichens. Uh, you see the, the lichens in kind of the bone armor. Um, you see the alpha again, the, the larger one, uh, carrying the giant hammer. Um, and then at about when the moon is fullest in the sky, all of the lichens look up, and then they clear out. And you see um, a man, a youngish man in a long black coat, just kind of walking and uh, spinning what appears to be just a ring around his finger. And behind him, sort of shambling, but with this sort of juddery movement, you see two probably eight foot tall, what appear to you to be very heavily muscled um, elves. Um, but their chest is glowing as they walk. Wait, their chest do what? Is glowing. And you notice that the creatures are giving them a wide berth. All right, I'm just going to keep an eye on them for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Every time we have some new discovery, it's like, oh, good, more horrors. That's worse. <laughs> we'll keep tabs on that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> add it to the, Alas, add it to the, the horrors list. continue. <laughs> like... <laughs> that seems friendly. Uh, are right. they doing anything other than this? Uh, what does this this young man with long black uh, coat spinning a ring with two monstrosities just strolling through the the field? Are they? Mm -hmm. Does it look like they have a destination? Does it look like they're going somewhere? Yeah, it looks like they're headed towards the uh, to the. Um... Oh, that's not good. Is anybody else awake, or is this just in the middle of the night? Um, there is a rotating guard here. Um, so someone else is awake with you. Another one of the half elves. Um, so I at that point I will uh, grab the uh, the half elf. Uh, you come here now. Yes, sir. And I'll point out at uh, what I'm seeing. What do you know? It's Gregor. It's not going to hurt us. Not unless we provoke. Uh, problem. Those is... are his guards, pets. I'm not sure how to classify them. Yeah, but they're headed towards the temple. I'm sure he has business with the matron. And he always goes with two guards? Would be unwise for him to travel by himself through the dark, wouldn't you think? Uh, I'm more concerned that they uh, met her ill will. You worry too much, Mazura. Is that your name? 
Yeah. She's stronger than you give her credit for. None of these kind of spits, none of these bastards would dare attack her in the open. Not by themselves, at least. They know that she is weak, but they also know that they are not strong enough to take her on their own. You know, you said that word never. It's the, the word is amazing until the first time. And then the second time and the third time. Perhaps that is so in the world that you came from. But the world that you came from also has a word that we don't have here. And boy, do I wish we did. What word is that? End. End? Mm. Have any of the four died before? These weren't the original four. No, these... Lisa Pratt has been here the longest, but she was not the first. She was the first of these four. Adventurers like you came before and defeated the four that were there, and then decided they wanted to stay. But the matron keeps getting weaker, and almost every one of these people have probably used her uh, abilities up until now. To get rid of the previous four? Not the first ones. The first ones did it on their own. But the current ones... Lisa... Not all of them use the power of the matron. Some of them use the power of the creature below the town. And yes, the matron has weakened and languished in recent centuries, but... Do you not think that if her power was so weak, these four have been in power for the better part of 300 years? Do you not think they would have made the move before now if they could? Well, if they've used her in the past to gain power and surplant the ones that existed before them, the arrival of new people like they were is a hell of a motivator. If it will make you feel better, we can tell them. I move quietly. I imagine you go as well. Quite. How much of a breath do you think we need? Give them a few more moments. I'll check if any of the others want to go. And I will visit you uh, each. Uh, Zir. Yeah. Um, Gregor and two roughly eight foot glowing chested uh, elves. Glowing? Uh, yeah. Are headed towards the matron. Do you want to stay here or do you want to follow? Oh, we should super go. Okay, that's what I figured. Um, I don't think we need to attack them. No, uh, no, no, no. The goal is not to attack. Cool. I'm good for it. Let me get the other two. I don't know if they're going to be exactly as uh, stealthy as we are, but it's worth well, asking. Um, I, think, I think with I think with the way this world is, either we all go or none of us go. I don't think we should ever split up. Oh, I agree with you. Uh, but if they say no, I'm not going to disturb them any further, and I'm going regardless. Uh, Quedon. Hmm. Gregor's on the move towards the temple. Follow or no? I feel very cautious about I, I don't know. I'm awful at these decisions. I sort of just go along with whatever the group is doing these days. Boss. Yeah. Gregor on the move towards the temple. Coming with or not? Two eight foot elves, glowing chests, towards the matron. What's the goal? Is this recon? Recon. I'm not I'm not the man for recon. 
I'm too loud. I can't sneak. I've, I have boots that make it just so I can sneak it all. And um, what, and what time is this? Around about how how long would I have been asleep, Dreadmaster? You, you'll have had time to get a long rest. You've had about four hours of sleep. Okay. <clears throat> all right. So, but uh, that being said. So if I'm if I'm rested, I'll kind of get up and go. I'm not good at sneaking. If you need stealth, I'm not the good. I'm not the best bet. But I already agreed to go. I'm going. I'm sneaky. If you have a way to signal, I can at least keep watch here. If something bad goes down, I'll stay with them. Uh, I'll stay with Walter. You, Queen, you'll. You're going with uh, Zier and Zor, right? That wasn't the plan. Then ah, you it... stay with Bosric, and I'll yeah. go with him. I want at least one cleric with each team. Uh, that's that's a better plan than I could have cooked up. <laughs> All right. And he snaps his fingers, and you see um, a sacred flame. And says, if we get into trouble, I'll throw this into the air. I'm... Um... Right then. I'm probably taking Mary with us. Um, sure well, if that's I'm... if that's the case, Queen should come with, right? To keep up the illusion. It's giving me a headache. I just woke up. I could, I can, I can make her very tiny, out of sight. Mm. Deal. I don't like the thought of this, but if you're set on it. Um, Clovis reaches over and puts a hand on your shoulder. It'll be all right. I'll keep them safe. You keep him safe. I will. He gives you a smile. All right, then. Telly ho. And oh. off we go. You're such a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So. Onward. Right. Yeah. So, um. Go ahead. I was going to say, uh, worst case scenario, um, I can make Mary uh, really huge and we can fly away very fast. Oh. That will not be quite as um, discreet as we want. I've never had a getaway wagon. That sounds really exciting. And I'll have Mary turn into a uh, bat. And then hide okay. under my cloak. Okay. Um, Clovis takes off his armored boots and slips on a pair of just like what appeared to be like leather slippers. He says, all right, I'll just leave these here. Come back for them later. And you guys make your way off. I need a group stealth check, so that's going to be just everybody roll stealth, and I'll average. I'm so glad I got a plus eight. <laughs> Hi, folks. I got a 30. I got a 26. <laughs> yeah, it's a natural 20 on me. Zier, you have phased out of existence. So that's, so that's not too bad. You're a 30. I'm a 26. Clovis Hell rolled yeah. a natural one. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it here. So he walks outside and not being able to help himself goes, yeah, it's cold. And just like snaps his hand over his mouth. I didn't do too much better. I rolled to see what I would have gotten. I would have gotten a three plus. Does, does, does the nat 20 one. override the negative the, the nat one? Um, It seems to. Uh, because even with that, Nothing seems to notice that you guys are out there. And uh, the elf that is traveling with you with the rifle says, keep your mouth shut if you're going to travel with us, for heaven's sakes. 
I like I like to imagine with my nat twenty, as soon as um as soon as Clovis like makes a noise like he's like, Oh, it's cold, me and all of my siblings, like almost like a hands in, just over his mouth. <laughs> Like my hand and then Gwen's hand and then Leif's hand. I'll just stack on his mouth at the same exact time. Yeah, I just, yeah. I think the average is actually a 19 each. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You oh, guys yeah. are, you guys are good. Um, so you begin to make your way. And I actually think that this might be a good place for a quick break. So, we did it, Rick. You are now awake. Is there anything the two of you would like to do or discuss? I want to give you that opportunity because the rest of the session is going to be very f the traveling group. Um, um, we're at the armory. No, we're we're at the you're you're at the town hall, which is everything. Right. Sure. Right. Apologies. The, the quote unquote safe house. Hmm. Um, I mean, I'll just, you know, I, I want to continue reading the book. I want to, um, I don't know if there's anybody here I would want to talk to other than, other than Boz, of course. Um, I don't know. I think I'm just going to be a little worry wart at the moment. Um, And just stick real close to Boz with whatever he wants to do. Okay. Uh, I'm going to load the crossbow with the silver bolts, sling it over my shoulder, draw my sword, my shield, and wait for the signal. Okay. If anyone appro approaches to talk, I will talk. But, but yeah. Um. No one seems to. Do you go outside to do this, or are you waiting inside? Um, how does it look outside? Surprisingly calm. Yeah, you know what? I'll kind of wait on the on the porch. Okay. I I will retreat inside if something if if two serious numbers come up. But okay, yeah. uh, you hear some howling, uh, and then you hear much louder this time. All of you hear this, and everyone who is outside, uh, you hear the howling, and then you hear a loud splash, and a whoop, the yip of something being hit. We don't see this very... through the windows. You're outside. You're oh. following. This is, like a, this is like a distant sound that's happening. Yeah. Oh. And then all of you hear rumbling through the trees. No, it's not picking up. Ah, uh, just a low growl. Okay. How far from us are we hearing this? I think we may have lost him. Oh no! Great. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. there you go. Back. You're back. Nope. It's gone again. Oh, I love this. I We're love this so heroes. much. You can't hear us. We're no, I can hear you. Though. We it's, can it's see you. Me. We can Your see. video's back. Your video's You're good. back. Your audio's back. Oh, good. Um. Question was, how yeah. far away is this that we're hearing it for the outside group? Um. You can't really gauge it, but a good distance. And I would assume it's closer than what I heard earlier. Yes. Okay. Um, and the splash uh, actually, was also much louder. Actually, at that, let me let me make a wisdom save. A self-imposed wisdom. Mm -mm, no, I am going back inside. And yeah, um, Queenan, you will see for the first time in your life, Boz looking absolutely petrified. What's happening? It's, uh, 
I wasn't entirely in character, but it can be. What's happening? <laughs> Oh, oh boy. What's going on? What? You know, I think you might actually be able to appreciate this. The prospect of fighting whatever the hell his name is that lives in that water is quite frankly the scariest thing prospect I've had since I got here. I don't know what you're afraid of, but I will tell you straight up. I'm Austin, afraid you hear running. a voice. You hear a voice over your shit. It sounds like it's right behind you, which is impossible because you're leaning up against the door. Water then. Interesting. Water? You didn't hear it. Only Bosric heard that. Oh, sorry. I thought that was... And then, and you, then you see an abrupt shift. The fear drains away and gives way to... Well. In a weird way, I'm thankful. The lady in black. Oh, right, you didn't see her. She was wearing all black. What about her? Yeah. It... She spoke uh... in my head. Oh. Well. And now she knows exactly what will get me. Fucking hell. I suppose we can't count on privacy for the... No, I suppose we can't. The rest of our stay, yes. Well. I... I know it's very little consolation, as it seems that everything that we have faced in these lands so far have only tried harder to pull us apart and sow doubt in our minds, but... Well, I am... I stayed behind to keep you safe. And... I will continue that, not only here, but wherever our travels lead us next, and, and, well, thank you for trusting me as much as you have already. And hopefully we have each other's backs. As much as we can. Because that, uh, if that lady can get in your head, it doesn't matter that your back is covered. No. Well, gonna... I don't know what else I can offer. There any like I'm gonna look around and see if there's like a pack of cards or some sort of That's gaming anything, implements. Anything to take your mind off. Yeah, there's a dragon chess set. You played? I can learn. All right. I mean, I'm not great at it. <laughs> well, then we'll, we can stumble through together, I suppose. What I mean, I I know the the very basic rules, but it's been years. I played it twice. Once against. My employer, once against my employer's daughter. Oh. Huh. That will be, uh, I think, the scene transition with the gameplay. Um, we'll have you guys roll to see who wins a little later. Uh, but the away team, um, you hear the splash and the yip and the growl. And Gregor stops. And he looks in the direction with sort of a look of... You can read his face. He's got kind of a look of disdain. And you hear him say to one of the taller elves, Ugh. Does he not know how expensive these are to make? They do not grow on trees! <laughs> um, 
Ah well. Any business do we not? Let us be on. And he walks, and you just sort of hear a as the creatures walk behind him. And then you hear a very different sound as the as they have stopped and now start to move again. You hear sort of a a burst of air and then something metallic as they're walking. Um, is it is it possible? I'm gonna I'm gonna try to look at the movements of the uh, the, the creatures because mm -hmm. I want to see if they're actually um, scary things. But I'm trying to see if they're moving uh, very uh, robotic, like machines. Um, I'm trying to disseminate the noise coming from him or them. Okay, uh, the noise is coming from them, okay. um, but they're not moving like machines. Um, it seems like the bottom half of their body is very, like, regimental and, like, moving as you would expect, like, an automaton to. But the top of their body is very floppy, like a zombie would be, basically. But it doesn't look like there's any difference between the two halves? Um, no. But there does appear, upon closer inspection, now that you are close enough to inspect this, you can see that there, there appears to be augmentation. So it looks like there are mechanical parts on top of flesh. All right, I'm going to let them get a little bit more distance before uh, continuing on. Okay, roll a perception check. Mess there you can roll this as well. That is a Mess. 15 plus perception. Hold on a second. Um, 21. Mez, that sound I heard earlier is closer now. The splashing? You heard it too this time, yeah? Yeah, I heard it. All right. Uh, Mez, with that 21, uh, the glowing on their chest is confined to the left side of their upper pectoral, and it appears to be... There appears to be a hole in their chest that is giving off this light. Okay. If it gets any closer, uh, we'll we'll get out of here. And if the sound is coming from further, like is uh, wherever it is, I'm going to start to move a little bit wider of an arc. Okay. So um, it, it seems like it's still like a good distance off. It's just closer than it was before. Okay. Um, which I don't know if that makes you feel better because it's far away or worse because it means that for something to make a sound that big it's very big yeah yeah i don't yeah. think there's a wrong answer there <laughs> okay just want to make sure i'm stirring that fear pot effectively <laughs> you are at all times constantly the horrors <laughs> all right um eventually you guys make your way down to the monastery, and uh, Gregor turns around. Um, All right, boys, I want you to wait here. I will be back momentarily. Just um, have a nap. And he snaps his fingers, and the light goes out, and the body sort of slump forward. And he walks up to the door and just Aragorn pushes it open, just both hands. Um, which you guys remember when you came here before, these were heavy doors. And he just kind of... Um, and the doors slam shut behind him. Mary. Reconnaissance. And I'll have her fly over uh, high and above to come down. Is there in the is there any openings or anything in the uh, the temple or is it completely sealed off? There's windows, yeah. Probably go over, fly near, trying to be as quiet as possible, so it can okay. hear everything going on. Okay. It feels like everyone here is trying to play God. I don't like it. No. Trying to achieve perfection. 
or create life. Well, it's nasty. The good news is that when you try to play God, the things you create generally end up killing you. So, should be fun to watch at the least. Well, not if we're caught in the middle of it. Yeah. So after a few minutes, uh, Mary takes off and flies back. Um, and a few moments later, uh, Gregor comes out, uh, goes up to the two hulking figures, snaps his fingers, the light comes back on. He says, our new friends seem to be uh, more adequate than we thought. This is going to be fun. Hmm. And he looks at his hand. It's a little cold, don't you think? And you hear one of the uh, creatures just... Mm. He says, I agree. And he reaches uh, down into his bag and you hear the sound again. You hear like a series of impacts, like something hitting his hand. And then when he pulls his hand back out, it is covered up to about here on his arm in uh, black metal. And he just kind of flexes his hand. <sighs> Much better. Come along, boys. Um, seeing that, we're gonna retreat. I'm gonna start to retreat and make motion to move further. Um... So if they're up there, we're going to move further away so that that way if the... And the only way they'd be able to come after us at this point is if they're aware of our location. Hmm. Which, if they are, they seem to give no desire to chase you. Um, and Mary returns. He spoke with the matron thing. He talked about you. He said you're proceeding as planned. You're stronger than he thought. He was glad you were nice to Katya. Matron said she wanted to be careful. She knew what happened the last time she put faith in someone. Gregor just laughed at that. Said, well, you still have faith in me. And she did seem to respond. He said he'd keep an eye on you. That's a lot to take in. Uh, what? <laughs> yeah, I think these politics are more complicated than... Oh, I'm more worried oh. because that's two of them that are keeping... Tra one's trying to identify me, the other's keeping an eye on me, and the matron's giving out... No, 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 not, not you specifically, Azura. All of us. The royal you. Oh, the ro oh you gotta specify. I think How we much? knew that Gregor was not entirely on the side of the, the dukes, though. Maybe he's just confirming what we already know, that he's an ally, or at least a partial one. What did she tell him specifically about us? Just that she has faith in us, but that she's scared because she's had faith in creatures before. Probably talking about the other dukes. Why don't we go ask her ourselves? I suppose we could. Let's. Uh, how, how, where's Gregor at this point? Him and his buddies. Um, he's probably made a fair distance off. Okay, we could start approaching the uh, the temple at this point. Okay. As we enter, I'm keeping an ear out to see if there's that lack of sound that happens again, that happened before we met, um, Elizabeth. Um. You have noticed that nature has been quiet, but not in the same way. It seems like in the same way of like avoiding a predator, things were giving Gregor and his creatures a wide berth. But it's not eerie. No. Necessarily. Okay. It's not it's not the complete silence of nature that cool. Lisa Beck created. Okay, sounds good. All right, uh so the doors are heavy but you notice that they have been left partially open
Maybe he did know we were there. I don't doubt it. Has um, the elf that's with us commented on anything? No, the elf that's with you is terrified. He's trying to keep up a brave face, but he is terrified. And okay. um, Clovis also hasn't said. Okay. Many poops from them. Got it. Um, yeah, the, so, the brown loincloth initiative, as they say. So I will, I'll, <laughs> I'll slip into the opening. I'm assuming it's big enough for us to, mm -hmm. to pass in. Um, you, as you walk in, you hear the sound of a book closing, and you see the matron sitting in the front uh, with an open book. And she says, can't actually read it, but sometimes it's nice to remember the feel of pages in my hands. Hello. Hmm. Were you expecting us? Gregor said you might be outside. But I wasn't expecting you to split. I hope this isn't all that's left of you. No, the others needed to finish their naps. <laughs> Yes, that does sound about right. The tall one does look ever so sleepy all the time. Oh, he's getting more rested all the time. Stronger we, and uh, more than capable. We've had some tough, tough encounters. Yet you seem to have risen above them. I so think it's not well placed. I'm confused. Do you parlay with them? often we have an uneasy alliance yes they know that they can't move against me openly and for the most part they ignore me but Gregor also wants them gone he I don't know what his motives are all I know is that seems more aligned with me than the creature below. He's been sort of my double agent, and Gretos, well... Gretos was promised my hand by the creature below the city, and I think in some twisted way thinks he's entitled to it. If he's on your side, why can't the two of you act against the others? politics of the realm, unfortunately. No Dreadmaster can rise against the others directly. But he could weaken them so you could take them out. Or release whatever Perhaps. bonds keep you here. Well, I cannot act against them. That was part of the pact that I made coming here the first time. I am a prisoner as much as you. What exactly it did he want? Acts through agents, but not through. Hmm? What exactly did he want? Yeah, was this a regular meeting or was this special? No. I think he was worried. Or I think he thought I might be. Lisabeth doesn't usually act in the open. And when her influence left her home, I could tell. Where is that influence now? You see her kind of like, you can't see her close her eyes, but as she sits up a little bit, you imagine the sensation of someone closing their eyes and thinking. Back where it belongs. Hmm. In the house to the east. She has her eyes on us. Well, it seems like everyone does. She was able to control my, uh, let's say, avatar for a better point. Strange, though not surprising. She is a wielder of extraordinary magic. I mean, to have survived in this place as long as she has, to keep Seltradot and Greto said they. That's an impressive young woman. It's a shame she was seduced by the creature below the village. 
she would have made a powerful ally. So she's more powerful than the other two? In her way. All right. Assume that Gregor is off the board for right now. Because I'm assuming at some point we do need to deal with him. Or is that the enemy of my enemy as my friend? As it stands, it's that. So for now, that piece is off the board. Which one of these three threats do we need to be mindful of first? I'm afraid that's not something I can advise you on. They are all dangerous in their own way. Each represents a different level of threat, but Greto so far seems disinterested in you, which you should take as a point of great pride. So which one? Anything that gets close to his beloved, and then she says that there's a certain revulsion in her voice, is treated as an immediate enemy, so... Who's so far, at least. He got... Oh, come now, Mazora. Pact he made. It's me. Mazora. And he means... So we're not acting against you. He should be fine. So... Between Lisabeth and Seljadot, I think... Seljadot has more immediate reason to hate you. Lisabeth just sees you as a player. You could use that underestimation to your benefit, though. She could be right, and I don't mean that in that you are weak, but she is an ancient evil. What is... I understand. We've been told that they all kind of have this goal of being the reigning dreadmaster like you said not directly but finding ways to de-seat dethrone the others i mean what is each of their goals more specifically i was saying to missouri just it feels uncomfortable they all seem like they're they're working towards perfection or an army Playing with creating life, playing with mechanizing, I guess. I truly do not know. I think Seltradot wants dominion. She was a nobleman in her time before. Even as a vampire, she was a nobleman. I think she wants to go back to that life and create an army of spawns beholden to her. Mm. Yeah, according to her notes, uh, she was saying what we would become. So apparently, she had a family once, a real family. Perhaps she wants that again. As for Lisa Bet, her her intentions are as veiled to me as her home. Her home. The one to the east. Uh, when you say veiled, what do you mean? You can't pierce some shroud or. You just never got invited for brunch. I can see the outline of the house. I can see nothing that happens with it. Mm. It's as if that region of the realm is hidden from me. I think she does terrible things there, based on what we know about her. Well, Pretty sure they all do terrible things wherever they are. That's a fair point. Even when she got here, she didn't seem entirely what she appeared to be. She was an elf, for sure, but... She was more than just an Umbrari. And you've heard, you've all heard the word Umbrari before. They are, um... They are elves who have sort of had their bodies saturated with, like, shadow magic. Mm. Um, and they, they have the full black eyes, um and usually black or white hair. But she... She seemed like so much more. More than shadows infect her. 
even when she came here, even when she was just a traveler like you, she was... As for what Gretos wants, I imagine that in his current state, he wants a hunting grounds. Mm. He always did care more for growing things and animals than he does for the trappings of civilization, I suppose. And Clovis shudders at that. I imagine. And um, the matron laughs. Yes, I know. He was a druid of some strength when he came here. Hmm. Maybe we can restore them all. I don't know. Maybe that's naive. It's nice. It's good to meet someone who doesn't just want to kill everything they meet. I feel bad. I was about to say yes, it does sound naive. Um, but then again, you're a little softer with people than I am. Uh, that's the dynamic I rely on, apparently. So. Um, Clovis kind of chimes in. I, it did work on Katia. Just saying. I was able to get her to let Dimitri go, and then she was crying in a corner. Zia's kindness led her to be Katia didn't something want to closer stand. to an ally. Well, she was, she was vulnerable. These other ones aren't. At least not as... No. Apparently. I'll agree to no, that. No, but... Kindness could still be an avenue, I suppose. And I'll never stop you from trying it. Thank you. If... If Gregor's on our side, why is he making those... wolf things? I, I heard him say that they're expensive to make. Gregor doesn't make the wolves. Not not all of them, at least. Seems like he made those automatons that were with him. He did make those. His, his fascination with death is unique. He's much like your friend Quedon in that. He seems unwilling to accept it as an eventuality. But he's not on your side, or on our side. If anything, he's sort of on his own side. Yeah. It just so happens that currently, our visions align. Hmm. Yeah, I was That's about to say, of... he's not on our side, he's just not against us at the moment, but I'm pretty sure that's a hair trigger. Yeah, that's fair. But, in fairness, I think he's on our side because we give him a steady supply of His experiments are less heinous than what some of the others would do to the people of the village, but... Did you say we give him a steady supply of people? Not all those who survive the spores are heroes of great strength like yourselves in your party. Some people wander in on the brink of death. Gregor meets them first, tries to save them in their final moments. Huh. That's long a ago, different. he told me his story. Long ago, he lost his mother. And not trusting the clerics of the gods, he used science to bring her back. Galvanism, he called it. Mm. Electrical currents. Extraordinary young mind. But the body he brought back was that only. A body. Mobile. Not alive. Huh. It chased him for a long time before he was finally able to tear it to shreds. 
then the spores hit his village too. Tragic. Tragedy is not an excuse, only an explanation. My heart has been hardened to tragedy over the years. Too many people use it as an excuse for atrocities. Don't you fear that any of this information you give Gregor is going to get back to the other three? I've given Gregor no information. He knows of no weakness of mine. He knows of no secret entrance to my citadel. And he knows better than to challenge me here in the seat of my power. And I never leave. Whose mind do you fear I'm... more, Seltradot or Elizabeth? Whose mind? Cunning, planning. Who do you fear more? Elizabeth. No question. That's who I fear more as well, well, if that matters. <laughs> well, she's the one who stabbed me so far of the two. Well, the sisters have already gained. And by proxy, their mother information about us just from us having been in their home. That's why I asked. Because if we fear Elizabeth's mind, then he, she's where we should go. The more she learns about us, the more powerful she'll be. Hmm. I warn you, Mazora, you make this a <laughs> you make a dangerous choice going to Elizabeth's. Seltradot let you leave. Lisa, that won't. I'm pretty sure if we walk back into Seltradot's place, she won't let us leave either. That avenue was cut off the second we found out her daughter was dead. That's why I'm no longer looking in comparison of how friendly they'll be, kindnesses or otherwise, and which one can put the most use to the information. Seltradot yes. knows enough. She's got her daughters. They've seen us fight. They know certain things. Elizabeth does not seem to yet. So if she doesn't know our full capabilities, we might stand a better chance. I will warn you this about Elizabeth before you make the final decision. Well, I don't make the decisions. I am only formulate some ideas and the rest of them. And I don't speak to you alone. I speak to all three of you information you take back to the other two. What Lisa Bet Nalusier seems to know is like the tip of an iceberg above the ocean. What Lisa Bet actually knows is what lies beneath the surface. Underestimate her at your peril. Is, um, is Katya dead? Like, fully? Can you tell? Um, the matron puts her, strains up her head again, and then she leans over and she puts her hands on the floorboards. And you see her hands begin to glow blue. Mm. Not fully. Oh. Her soul exists within the mycelium still possible she'll be reborn. There's, um... There's a paladin that's been spoken of. Yes, Andros. Do you think... Do you think if we... If we destroyed the heart, he would have a chance at coming back? You have a grave cleric of some renown in your party. He doesn't know it yet, but he's meant for greater things. Hmm. As long as he's around, perhaps there's a chance for Brother Leandros. If nothing else, freedom from this tormented half-death he's in now. Mercy. 
I'm going to put a pen in the matron, cut back to the dragon chess game. <laughs> Can I please have both of you roll yeah, three D100s? Three D100s? Yes, separately. So, like, oh, do yeah. it and then do it again. Yep. Do it one at a time. So, tell me your first roll. Cool. Whoa, 96. All right. Mr. Cobb? Can't hear you. Oh, uh, the first one was 75. Okay. Um, um, so the first game is a, it's a decent match for a minute. But then... Queden unlocks some kind of like secret <laughs> twilight maneuver, and Osric, you find yourself surrounded. <laughs> All right. Second D100, please. <laughs> Let's go. 92. <laughs> 61. All right. Uh, Queden, you get a little bit, you know, pleased with yourself and try the same strategy again, but Osric, being a soldier, sees the tactic and actually cuts you off this time. Bitch. <laughs> it's bad All right. So <laughs> Final D100. Uh, oh, no. 40 even. 42. <laughs> it is an incredibly close match. You are down to one piece each. But, Bosric, to your dismay, you see... <laughs> As by sacrificing one of his pawns, Queden is able to move his king into checkmate. Woo! <laughs> well done. I had only some idea of what I was doing. I told you, I played this game twice. Yeah. And well, the time I played against my uh, employer's... My employer... He was using it as a cover to have a chat about me and his daughter. That is yeah. heavy. <laughs> yeah, now imagine how quickly I lost that game. Not very, because he was toying with me the entire time. Well, no, no social games here. Only, uh, well, it was, was an honor to pull one over on the strategist himself when I... Reach my hand over for a handshake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> better at uh, I'm better at liar's dice. That brought me so much joy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. It brought me joy too. <laughs> oh, I rolled that forty two, I got nervous. Mm. I, I really wanted your last game to be within five points, so I was very glad about that. Heck yes. It only would have been better if it was a 40 and a 41. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, as you guys are finishing up, um, Lady Thane actually walks over. Are you gentlemen enjoying yourselves? As much as we can. It's less about enjoyment and more getting my mind off something. Yes. I... I've done some reading. Um, Captain Cobb? Just... Cobb, Bosric, Bos... The Vermilion what? Vigil is, uh, is a world away. Well, what would you I'm prefer? not Captain I... of... I wish to be familiar with you, not in any sort of romantic sense, obviously, but I... I protect us. believe I have someone waiting at home anyway, so... She gives you a, a wink. Raise an eyebrow. Well. Long story. Anyway, uh, Bosric or Cobb, either way. I, I owe you an apology, Bosric. When our village was pulled into the domain, the incursion was a recent phenomenon. Not recent in that it had happened the day before, but it had been within the last 300 years. 
much has changed from the outside that I was not privy to. And I meant no offense when I called you an orc. I thought that's what you were. There's no shame in it, but clearly it brought you some discomfort. And I wanted to apologize. Well, only in the sense... There's no excuse for ill will. Only in the sense that you called me Orc, you didn't call him Furbolg, or Zia Seder. It came off... Demeaning. I, I apologize. As I said, where... When I came from, more than where I came from, you were still invaders in our eyes. So I take it you didn't get the uh, the account of the orcs that uh, yeah, it's not important. Thank you. I accept your apology, and I appreciate it. She puts uh, pair, uh, mugs of ale in front of both of you. I didn't mean to interrupt your game. I just I owe you an apology. And if there's anything either of you need, I I want to provide. I want this to be a place of safety. For if not comfort. Comfort is hard to find in this realm. Don't we both know it? <laughs> Had, uh... When I was outside, I heard your, uh... aquatic friend thrashing about it. Uh, I'm not fond of water. Leave it at that. Yes, I, I wanted to ask. I, well... <laughs> This might be a bit of a uh, well, hero's confidence in me, perhaps, but th this there's something about this land that uh, seems to be well, bringing out our worst fears. Is that does that does that extend to you as well? I it seems to be targeting us specifically. Maybe I'm just drawing lines in where they don't exist. But... Sometime ago, yes. It's not the place that brings them out. It's... the woman in the house to the east. She enjoys using our nightmares to torment us. So it is targeted. Thankfully, she grew tired of tormenting us long ago. You've given her no playthings. No ways to exploit. Well. Hopefully. We are here to... Put the playthings back in the chests. I suppose. You referred to... The creatures, the... The howling monsters as werewolves. Let me put your mind at rest. That's not what they are. Yes. Not in the sense that you know them, at least. You know the spores affect everyone differently here. Some people gain a measure of strength. Some people aren't affected at all. Some, their minds are separated from their body and they lose control of it, as was the case of the screaming creatures that attacked you on your way to the monastery the first time, but the wolf creatures were people like us. The spores infected their minds and gave them a sort of diminishing disease. Their minds became feral. And they resorted to more instinct than rational thoughts. There, but by the grace of the matron go we, I suppose. Well, uh, thank you for clarifying the nomenclature. Uh, I call it a bit of personal history. I, uh, not too fond of wolves. Yes, you worship the god of wolves. You well, are a strange 
quick check why does it ask. And I've mispronounced their name. I apologize. It's the accent. I've been called worse words than strange. I'll take it. I serve the god of wolves. I worship him, yes, because well, he has kept me alive. He has taught me things that I did not previously know. But, well, fear, especially fear of death, is oftentimes what gives people power. I could say the same thing about that which is currently tormenting our dreams. Fear is power. Death is power, and, well, I feared both for a time, and Fear is not always bad. And here you sit. Yes. No. Sometimes fear is what keeps us alive. Death isn't always bad either. It's just the next logical step. Well, death here means a whole lot different than death elsewhere. But yes, I, my <laughs> entire morals about the boundaries between life and death seem to be put into question. But so of the morals of many people who end up here, so. That is the way of this place. Thank you for your hospitality in, in light of our journey here and being as helpful as you can. And I extend the same thanks to you, boss. All right, let's jump back to the monastery. You guys have any more questions for the matron? Yeah, I um, think so. For Zier. You, um, you helped us once before. I don't like asking for help, but I'm going to have to ask for something else. We are ill-equipped to deal. So the reason I look at Elizabeth is that unknown Seldra Dot's daughter we really don't have a compelling way to deal with in order to get rid of them as a threat we need the ability to harness the power of cold the only people who have that is myself and Mary and I nod towards thy, my cloak um, to avoid Mary, it's simply stay away from Mary. I could hurt them with cold, but it comes at great risk. Is there anything you can give us that would allow us to use that against them? There is, but I'm afraid I can't give you much. Depending on what it and is, she uh, doesn't need much. She gives you, you, you um, a vial. Uh, she actually hands it to Zier. Of, um, it appears to be like clear, like crystal clear blue water. And, and um, she says, this is frostworm stomach acid. Coat a weapon in this. It's good for one hit, but will add a bit of the winter's chill to your attack. And this, mm. this is enough for three doses. I'm afraid it's all I have. More than what we had before. So, in um, in game terms, that uh will apply a D8 of cold damage to any weapon it is applied to. Um, it is a bonus action to apply it, 
and it can be used three times. Wow, we have so many we have so many wets for our weapons. What what, 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 what so what many lakelets? What creature did that come from? A frost worm. Hell yeah. Where'd she get that from? Did she say? She said from the belly of a frost worm. She did not say. Where did she, yeah, when, when did she do that? Oh, wait, wait, no, he <laughs> said frost worm. That's why I was like, huh. <laughs> um, no, I was gonna ask. Um, Wouldn't you like to know, weather boy? Is it I possible, uh, <laughs> is it possible, uh, to, uh, is there somewhere in this land where we could get more? Not that I know of. This creature doesn't live here naturally. This, the items that I give you, just so you know, are... I hesitate to say recycled, because I have been able to spontaneously create some of them, but... Most of these are things that were taken from those who failed before you. All right, we the should, man uh... who brought this had six files, each one with a different elemental property. This mm -hmm. is the only one that remains. Hmm. Oh. I do have one last question. Well, um... Mez, can we huddle? Uh... Sure. <laughs> and Zir like sidesteps like six feet away and just like crouches. <laughs> I'm just gonna come put up me. the one moment and. Should, should I tell her about the ritual dagger? Is that something I should bring up? She probably school? already knows, so yeah. Okay. Um, That's that's what I thought. Uh, and Zir will. Okay, break huddle. <laughs> <laughs> and she like gets back up and um, walks back over. Um, I I found this ritual weapon um, at the Seltra Dots. Do Do you know anything about it? And she'll take out the Thorn of Haragoki. Oh, this is um, this isn't a ritual weapon so much as a divine gift. Oh, this was given to a chosen of Haragoki, a cleric of his, who did him a great service. He carried it as an heirloom and a weapon. Why did Seltradot have it? He was lost. Because Seltradot killed him. Apparently she fears this weapon. Oh. A weapon touched by the divines is very powerful against a creature of the undead. And she had it surrounded by a magic suppressing orum. Yes, that doesn't surprise me. I think she wanted to keep it out of prying eyes. Hmm. Well, it's my eyes possible. tend to pry, so she failed. It's possible she used it to. It's possible it harmed one of her daughters and that's why she hid it or it's possible she used it to extract her own blood to keep it in a more uncoagulated state mm. it's a noble weapon though wield it well if Haragoki didn't want you to have it even here you wouldn't Hmm. I've never really paid attention to the god stuff. Maybe I might now, I guess. Yeah, if you don't, you're not missing anything. You remind me of someone that I heard a story about once. Oh? A young, a young Batkin, a similar disinterest in the gods. He's the Grandmaster of an Order of Monks now. No? Oh. Well, I'm glad he landed somewhere. Yeah, interesting. 
It's getting late. You should go back and get some rest. Um, that was our safest path back. I'll send you. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's actually a lot quicker. Take a deep breath. And she snaps her fingers. And you find yourselves outside of the tavern. Hold on a second. I got to roll um, some here. I didn't take a deep breath. Okay. <laughs> oh, I did. <laughs> I so did. Okay, you said we uh, we're back. We're back, I assume. Yes, and um, Clovis kind of cracks his neck and says, "I think that's all I needed." You have been so lovely to watch. And then collapses as if a marionette strings had just been cut. And that's where we're going to end this week's session.